right, thanks for staying with us. You are watching KTN Weekend Prime. It's time for Checkpoint now. It's been a week since the proposal was put forward to close the Dadaab refugee camp that is located in the country. It all kicked off with the Deputy President William Ruto. Take a listen to some of the statements that were made by him and others last Saturday. Vile tumeamua ndivyo itakavyokuwa. Mambo ya Dadaab na mambo ya refugees Tumezungumza na watu wa UNHCR tumewaambia hiyo kambi ambayo iko Dadab kwa miezi mitatu wahamishe iende Somalia. Na kama hawatahamisha kwa miezi mitatu sisi wenyewe tutachukua lori na mabas hawa watu tutawapeleka kwao. We have said the way America changed after 9/11 is the way Kenya is going to change after Garissa. It will not be business as usual. It will not be the same again. Ukiwa mzuri kwa mtu na amekuja kwako, ukampa pahali pa kulala, ukampa chakula, kisha ukawa mzuri kwake, na yeye mwenyewe anaanza ku train hata wale vijana wetu wawe wakitupiga sisi. Why do we need that camp in our country? Mambo ya Dadab refugee camp, hiyo camp ifungwe haraka iweze kanavyo. Hawa watu warejeshwe kwao waendelee kufanya maendeleo huko kwao sababu wakaji wa Kenya wamechoka na kukaa na watu wa nje ambayo wa, wanatuletea ugaidi So let's start off where that sound bite ends with the gentleman you've just seen there. <laughs> we have Thank you very much gentlemen. Let me introduce my panel. Uh, first of all, we have Ambassador Kanad Odembo who was our former uh, representative in the United States. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having we also me. have uh, Honorable Ndungu Gedenji who's the chair of the Defense Committee and Foreign Relations as well. Oh, yeah. And we have Dr. Ekuru Okot who's a constitutional lawyer. So let's start with you, uh, Mushimiwa. Um, make a case for us if you will tonight for the debate surrounding the closure of Dadaab? Uh, thank you, Yvonne. Well, I, I think um, over the last few years, uh, and particularly in the face of rising terror attacks and uh, investigations uh, into those attacks and um, their genesis, um, and the intelligence that has been coming out of our intelligence community and even the uh, international intelligence community about the activities of some of the um, uh, members of the refugee camps in Dadaab and also in Kakuma. For instance, uh, after the investigation on Westgate, and this was also uh, included in, the, in our report, um, it was proved that uh, some of the terrorists actually planned um, and staged um, the attack on Westgate from Kakuma refugee camp. Uh, there are also reports that um, enemy combatants have found refuge inside Dadaab um, uh, uh, in, the inst in the facility and uh, several operatives of Al-Shabaab uh, used the camp um, for planning, for rest and recreation, for safe havens for their families um, and actually crossed the border at will and operated in the, the northern uh, part of Kenya uh, at will and using uh, the camps as a rear base. There are areas in the camps which we know for a fact, uh, these are stories from UNHCR and even from the host communities, which are no-go areas for Kenyan security forces. Kenyan security forces cannot access those areas because it is so dangerous and there are people who are not known. In terms of the profile of the people who are in the camps, we have uh, registered refugees who are bona fide and we also have people who are not registered and their identities are unknown. Uh, many of these who uh, reside in the camp, some uh, even uh, go out and in, into the camp, either to, to urban centers or back to Somalia and back again. In terms of the, uh, the, 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 the children who grew up in the camp, uh, we know that this camp has been there for 20 years. I mean, uh, this, this is uh, quite mm. uh, you know, unique in the world. Uh, not only uh, apart from it being the fourth largest city uh, in Kenya, mm -hmm. in terms of population. But when children reach a certain age, there's a challenge in getting them educated because of lack of facilities and we find, uh, we get reports that many of these children disappear out of the camp 
uh, and possibly out of the country and across the border right. and uh, find um, their way into the Al Shabaab uh, training and recruitment centers for training and then coming back into Kenya or even fighting the government in right. Somalia. So closure would be a solution to some of these challenges that you've uh, mentioned here? Absolutely. I think that the, the whole process of uh, the, the camp has been uh, I wouldn't want to say mismanaged, but it has been terribly poorly managed. Mm -hmm. And uh, in light of that you know, uh, situation, and in light of the, the, the risk and the threat to national security, I think it is prudent uh, for the government to urgently close the camp, repatriate uh, the refugees back into Somalia, because it's not like they don't have anywhere to go. Southern Somalia and Jubaland is, is fairly secure. There are several areas uh, which are secure and safe. Mm -hmm. There are Jubalanders living and working there, farming and doing their business. Okay. All right. Bektari, what do you feel about all of this? Because we have the non-reforma principle and, uh, you know, some saying yeah. that this seems like it's forced repatriation. No, I, I think le Kenyans, first of all, need to understand that one, uh, that uh, Kenya is a very respected member of the Committee of Nations uh, and uh, we have signed the 1951 Geneva Convention relating to the status of refugees, the 1969 OEU Convention on the specific aspects of refugees. We have also incorporated before even the new constitution in 2006 uh, with the Refugee Act. And then, of course, uh, our own constitution uh, very much anchors international law and treaties in Kenya. So. I have no problem whatsoever by saying that uh, people who have ceased to be refugees should go back to their country. And the when does one cease being a refugee? Well, when the mm -hmm. situation back in your country has normalized and, you know, peace yeah. and stand, human rights and stuff like that. So I think the conversation we should be having, uh, rather than having this blanket condemnation of everybody in the refugee camp as a possible terrorist, uh, as, as Moshimu, I think, uh, you know, uh, sort of hints to. I think we should be able to say uh, that is it all the 350 mm -hmm. or about 600,000 refugees who are resident in both refugee camps in, in Dadaab and Kakuma that are terrorists? So I think we should be able to make that distinction very clearly and we must follow the law because uh, we cannot say wake up one morning just because of, say, the, the Garissa unfortunate situation, Westgate unfortunate situation, uh, Mandera 1, Mandera 2, Mpeketoni, that today in three months let's close the camp. There are processes to be followed. I think we need to be able to establish uh, that, you know, they are the situation back in Somalia as normal. It's okay. a matter of fact. Uh -huh. I'm not sure we can even say that the situation back in Somalia that was is going, normal. That was going to be my next <laughs> question. Can, <laughs> you, can we say Aren't that? We uh, our country, forces are still there. Uh, present in, uh, in, in, uh -huh. in Somalia. Uh -huh. Because you're saying that we are actually following the source of this. So I think for me, one thing that I really like to fall to motion you are for, mm -hmm. is to say, if really we have all this intelligence about mm -hmm. the operations, mm -hmm. the incubation of Al-Shabaab and terrorist mm -hmm. activities mm -hmm. in the DAB, why can't we act on it? Remember, Kenya hosts over 10 different nationalities. We're talking about Burundians, Rwandese, Congolese, right. Southern So Southern they're not all Somali. Ethiopians. So I think the risk we run as a country is to say, just because of Garissa, that we profile all Somali refugees and say they are terrorists. Okay. I'm not even sure we have that proof yet. But and I would really would have loved Moshima to tell us what is it that they have done in terms of optimally using the intelligence uh, reports. Mm -hmm. that, in, that, in fact, that, uh, uh, I wanted to say it's not uh, just because of Garissa. In fact, there, there's a, a clear and uh, extensive history of uh, the dub um, uh, and insecurity. Uh, you remember back in 2011, um, we had aid workers, uh, MSF France, two um, uh, aid workers were kidnapped from the dub and taken into Somalia. Uh, we had the, the DC who was kidnapped, taken into Somalia. We had KDF forces who were kidnapped, taken into Somalia. We had mm -hmm. business people who were kidnapped and taken into Somalia. Mm -hmm. All this originating in right. and around Dadaab and the people who are refugees there. We okay. are not saying that every single person in Dadaab is, is a terrorist. Uh -huh. No. Uh, of the 300,000 to 600,000 who are registered, there may well be a sizable population who are genuine. But even there are a million refugees in Dadaab. Right. Class. Okay. So the issue, the issue is right. who are these people who are not registered, <laughs> okay. who are they, no identity, right. we don't know their activities. Uh -huh. uh, certainly that's a, a situation that can't be allowed to pertain, not in this country. Okay. Just, just before Ambassador just comes before, in, yes, please. I would like maybe Mesh Mushima, maybe Ambassador can also pick up on this issue. Yeah. The guy who seems to have led the massacre mm. of 147 Kenyan students in Garissa campus wasn't actually a refugee. This was a Kenyan Somali, a lawyer 
educated probably by our own taxpayers' money. So mm. really, from that point alone, and maybe um, Ambassador, I'll throw this uh -huh. question to you. Mm. I, Is I it fair then to keep on targeting the refugees, or uh -huh. we should be mm. able to ask ourselves, Maybe the problem is also within us. Okay. All right. I'd like you to hold that thought. And I'm really sorry. We have <laughs> on the line, and we'll come back to you, um, somebody much like yourself who's representing Kenya at the UN. We have on the line Dr. Martin Kimani, who's the permanent representative of the country to the UN. He joins us on phone. Thank you so much for being patient with us tonight. Um, could you please give us your perspective on the discussion that you've heard so far and that's, been, that's pertaining in the country at the moment regarding this closure of the dab? Uh, thanks, Yvonne, and uh, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. I,
president himself is the one who signed an agreement between Kenya, Somalia and the United Nations just um, a year and a half ago to a program, a three-year program of voluntary repatriation Wh which of Somalia. Which nobody Somalis. is living up to. In fact, that agreement okay. is That is the agreement. So we can't halfway through it uh -huh. decide that they must go because a handful of terrorists walked into a university campus and butchered our children. In terms of the tripartite, uh -huh. uh, this is the agreement that uh, Balozi is referring <coughs> to, uh, it is clearly uh, not performed. And uh, Kenya cannot be expected to be the, 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 the sole uh, you know, member of the international community, which is uh, putting up with this situation ad infinitum. True, true. Uh, Yvonne uh, Ambassador uh, Kimani said just now, in uh, Tanzania, they repatriated half a million refugees in one month. Mm. We have maybe it was a 50, million. Correction. We have maybe a million. Got that we from. have it maybe a million refugees. refugees. <laughs> Three month timeline is quite generous, frankly. Uh, but uh, l let me just say this. Uh -huh. I was shocked to hear at the uh, Copenhagen conference in Denmark uh, uh, some, uh, I th a few months ago, uh, a proposal was being floated by the international community that all the refugees of Somali origin would be moved out of Europe and, and Kenya would be uh, given special funding mm -hmm. to host all these uh, refugees uh, from uh, Europe and other parts of the world mm -hmm. in Kenya. I that mean, why has, the, why has yeah. the international community uh -huh. imagined... Yeah, the same same people who have actually signed this con const I mean uh, these treaties we have actually incorporated into our laws so there is a process in which we can we should actually follow and say you know who is a refugee who is not a refugee and that brings me to my second point and maybe this is a wake-up call for Kenya we have for the longest time ceded our international responsibility mm. to decide who, who must admit as a refugee in Kenya. But we have given it actually the refugee status isn't that something that's not in question? If I remember reading the laws right, it says one does not need to be formally uh, proven as refugee status. It's merely uh, a declaratory no, nature. No, no, that's not true. Uh -huh. that not that's true. not true. You, for, this is the point it I'm trying true. to make. Mm. We, in a way, must take the blame for having and all refugee matters in a very lackluster way. Because UNHCR or the international community can come in and, and feed refugees in a camp or decide who their status, what is called refugee status determination processes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we have actually ceded that. We have allowed uh, UNHCR that is supposed to play a supervisory role mm -hmm. under the international conventions mm -hmm. to now do it. Ideally, Kenya should be the one deciding who should we admit as a refugee into Kenya. Based on the five grounds, as you know, under Article 1 of the Fiscal Convention, persecution based on religion, social group, member of a political group, I, you know, all those other things. So the fear of persecution is what should admit someone as a refugee. Basically, asylum seekers, the first mm -hmm. thing. But Kenya has never done this. Kenya sits back and says, ah, since UNHCR is doing it, let it do it. And I think also we must hear a portion blame. UNHCR also ought to have incapacitated the Kenya government, yeah, capacity the Kenya government mm -hmm. to be able to do RSD processes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. refugee mm -hmm. status determination. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and maybe it's a wake-up call for us that uh -huh. we must 
just the same way we decide at the immigration entry points, yeah. JKIA okay. and the rest, uh -huh. do we give you a, a visa to come into Kenya? Or not. Okay. We decide that. But All in right. this particular case, uh -huh. Kenya does not make the decision and it has you slept on the job. I, I, I want to make a point about yeah. uh, yes, securitization like of, of, of areas where the right. refugees can return to. You know, uh -huh. in, in, in uh, Iraq, uh -huh. uh, during the time of Saddam Hussein, uh, the huge Kurdish population, which is in the northern or north of Iraq, yeah. uh, were fleeing into Turkey. And the Turks said no. They refused to, to let them in. They sent them back. So they, they refused to let them in, though. Uh, let me finish. They, 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 they sent them back even though they, they were qualified under the five, uh, you know, um, mm -hmm. uh, they call laws or five... five yeah, um, the golden right. grounds. The golden <laughs> grounds. They qualified. But they, they were sent back. So, okay, it's okay for Turkey, uh, you know, no, uh, to, to uh, keep their, their national interest first before anybody else, but not for Kenya. Uh -huh. Number one. Number two. When they repatriated um, the Kurds into northern Iraq, the international community stepped up and they said we're going to create a safe haven a in the north zone, of Iraq, a buffer zone, zone okay. and secure um, uh, the, the Kurds in northern right. Iraq. What is so hard? And we're talking about, uh, you know, victimizing. We're not victimizing anybody. The, 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 the conditions but in the Dab are yeah. atrocious. Okay. Uh, and what, what would be so hard for the international community to step up go into, in, into Jubaland in southern Somalia, uh -huh. set up buffer zones and repatriate these people into their own country because this okay. is ultimately their country, their country. And, and, right. and secure them to, to, to play a part in the okay. rehabilitation okay. and, uh, I'd, I'd like and to the to economy of, of to Somalia. We, to bring a different Yvonne, perspective. We have, yes. we have three options uh -huh. here under what are referred to as durable solutions, solutions uh -huh. to, the refugee, to a refugee problem. Okay. One, we can integrate them. Tanzania has, has done that. And many countries Last have year, done that. Yeah. Secondly, yeah. we can voluntarily repatriate them. And thirdly, resettle we can resettle them to in a third country. country. Okay. Those you, are the three options that we, that we, we have, that we have signed we can off. Also, we, can uh -huh. also we have signed repatriate them uh, you not, know, forcibly, uh, not forcibly because and nobody not forced them to them come them here not so we're not going to force them to go back so I mean <laughs> ultimately you must lose sight of the fact the that this is their country seemed to say we, we, we have a three nobody, yeah. Yvonne, Yvonne yeah. we cannot sustain a situation which is completely <laughs> unsustainable where people are sitting in a camp uh, not being a productive part of the Kenyan economy, neither being a productive part of the, of the uh, Somali economy mm -hmm. and uh, by the way I'll tell you for a fact even the host communities want those uh, refugee camps closed and the people to go back to their countries. And True, some of the right. refugees in those camps would welcome but the but opportunity to go back and be productive in their country. But so th this, this thing about on the you know, uh, th them being some sort of victims okay, and helpers, the issue they, they, of they national be security. If we are seriously that preoccupied about national security, just a few weeks ago, we failed in our fundamental responsibility to secure 147 of our children. So we should continue failing? No. The is solution is not to victimize. No, no, no. Refugees. Okay. Right. How is we can people back to right. their own country victimization? It is. It is. How, how does that Gentlemen, uh, let's, let's listen to you. you Let me bring, bring another perspective <laughs> to this. So, you see, you, you've studied this yes, situation of refugees. This insecurity is a concern to Kenyans, for sure, mm. and the world. Two points I want to make. One, are we blaming all refugees? It seems to me we are agreeing we are not blaming all refugees. Right. Should we also make a decision about Southern Sudanese, uh -huh. Burundians, Ethiopians, Rwandans, Zimbabweans, we uh -huh. Ethiopians, all of and them. the rest? Uh -huh. Do we force all of them? Do we now call all of them? Hold that thought. Let's, let's have, yeah? have Mushimiro respond. No. We'll come to okay. your point. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, you know, the keep second point. Hold, hold the yes. second point. Uh, uh, part moment. of what we did by going into Somalia in, in, uh, in October uh, 2011 was to create uh, a secure buffer between uh, Kenya and, and what was then uh, al shabaab held territory. But mm -hmm. since then, and Kenya was very successful in liberating almost 300,000 uh, square kilometers of, mm -hmm. of ground that had not been uh, liberated since Amisom went into Somalia in 2007. Mm -hmm. uh, so Kenya's entry definitely was a game changer. And, and, and the point about them being there it continues to be important to be part of Amazon so that we can continue to help the Somali national government to create an environment for all their people to be productive and, and for the country to be stable and peaceful. The buffer zone situation all has right. been created. There okay. is Jubaland administration. Uh, Let me finish. There is Jubaland Although, administration. No, uh, and there are Jubalanders living in Jubaland. Please so allow me to interject <laughs> because you're not answering the question which was what, what was happens question? to the other, other refugees. Population. It's not just about Somalis Somali. who, yes, uh, we agree, uh, make up the majority of, mm. of, of those that are in the dark. But what happens to the others? from other countries in the proportions where we have the fourth largest city in Kenya okay. being under one national The question, Mashimua, is what happens to 
the others? Will they also go back to South Indeed, Sudan? Indeed, why not? Will they also go back to <laughs> Ethiopia? Well, once we stabilize uh, <laughs> Southern Sudan, as, we are, as Kenya is, is participating uh -huh. in, in okay. doing, My second but so the, f the fact <laughs> remains, <laughs> uh, Yvonne, the fact remains uh -huh. that Jubaland has an administration. All right. there is a, uh, there's a government in, in Mogadishu. Uh, so in true. terms of, of creating a stable uh, environment for mm -hmm. Somalis to, to uh, you know, uh, be productive in their own country, Kenya has played a part and Africa has played right. its part. So let's be Why clear. Is it the, only the Somalis? Why can't the refugees also go back and play Great. their part? Fair point. So is it only the Somalis who are being targeted for the repatriation? Because you haven't answered. Uh, in your response, the issue, you said the issue if South hand, Sudan becomes safe, the issue at hand, that they will go. The issue at hand uh -huh. was an issue of national security. The issue at hand was the issue of the camps being used by our Shabaab operatives as safe haven and as, as, okay. as staging areas for their, their terrorist activities. So, you're not so as the far as, those, uh, as that is concerned, those camps need to be closed okay. because uh, those communities need to go back to their country to be productive yeah. in their country and then we can assess and, re and review all the other arrangements let that let we have in other countries. Then you can get to your second point. Our refugee camps need to be closed. There's no doubt about it. Nobody should live in refugee status all their life. We agree to that. Hold that thought, Ambassador. I want to hold that And certainly not for three generations. Let us finish your second point. A million refugees being put in lorries and buses in a period of three months, forcibly, to go back to Somalia? That doesn't make sense. Point me. Yvonne, I want to help Mwishi Mwanda. The question is avoiding to answer. I'm not avoiding. Which I'm is it? Which is which is this? Which is this? <laughs> <laughs> which is this? Uh, is this? Uh, we around cannot <laughs> repatriate or forcibly return all refugees to Somalia from the dub. Why not? Otherwise, we'll have because to there are different no, nationalities. Because, because for, two reason, for two reasons. One, there are different nationalities that we are not seem to be blaming. Mm -hmm. Because we should be able to say what is the decision we're going to take about Southern Sudanese, uh -huh. Rwandans, Eritreans, Ethiopians. We must, we must settle that decision. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, we are saying only Somalis then must be repatriated. repatriated. Yet we seem, actually not repatriated, be forced to go back. Mm -hmm. Yet we seem to be blaming the Somali That's uh, uh, nationals. Mm -hmm. the, the second issue is this. Really, if you go by that decision, and I, and I sympathize with the government's uh, you know, uh, difficult yeah. position in terms of yeah. assuring it us security, we all agree. I think we are scapegoating. We are yeah. scapegoating because we are picking probably the, I mean, the, the easier option, which is, for me, wrong, both in terms of law, in terms of facts. Mwishimu has not told us the extent to which they have actually employed the intelligence. If you tell me today, as a country, that our forces cannot get to a certain part of the Dab refugee camp, then what are we saying? Are we saying, are we in charge of Kenya? We are not in charge. Because we are the hosts under international law. Mm -hmm. We are the ones who should determine how you should stay here, how long you should stay here. And the dub falls within the our borders? Of course. There is, within there our is the role of UNHCR in uh -huh. determining no. and, and ensuring any government or any host country on the neutrality of the, 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 the refugees in the camp. Uh -huh. That has not happened, Yvonne. And we must be fair and we must be honest. Actually, the no neutrality no. Of, of the people in the camp, even in 2011, when, when the mass exodus from, from Somalia into Kenya, uh, fleeing the, 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 the drought in the Horn of Africa, yeah. it was documented that enemy combatants were coming into the camp with bullet wounds. All right. Young let men were coming into the camp with bullet wounds. Let me help you out. Let me help you out because I'd like to, uh, you. I'd like to talk happen. about the exceptions to the rule because we keep yeah. talking about the rule of law in Kenya doing that. But there are exceptions to the non-reforma principle, yeah. yes, yeah. which, um, if I were to quote, um, cannot be claimed by a refugee for whom there are reasonable grounds yeah. for regarding as a danger to the yeah. security of the yeah. country right. in which he or she is um, or constitutes a danger <coughs> to the community of that country. Would it be right. fair, Moshimia um, Ekurako, to actually say that this is... Uh, what the government is basing its its decision on? You know, let me is that a fair point, do you think? I started by saying that Kenya for the longest time ceded its own international responsibility to UNHCR by allowing UNHCR to conduct refugee status determination processes. Ideally, it should be Kenya that should be dis deciding who should we admit into Kenya as a refugee. Now, we didn't do that because the law is very clear. You cannot admit anybody, and any asylum seeker, especially if they are members of a certain group, and yeah. call them refugees. And what we have also done over the years is to do what we call group determination. Yes. That we look at people fleeing conflict because of a situation back home, which mm. sometimes is obvious. Mm -hmm. I mean, the war in, mm. uh, like recently the war in South Sudan, Sudan yeah. people come in, ma okay. in large groups. Of course, I, I'm such in such a group, group. Yeah? Okay, there are exceptions to the law? Yes, yes there are. That there allow the government to say mm. these not are overriding considerations of national Yvonne, security? Those are yes. not exceptions. Okay. If there oh. are that individuals. is the inalienable, inalienable right mm -hmm. of any government mm -hmm. to determine if they will accept 
or reject any person who is a refugee. Mm -hmm. That is the government's inalienable right. Okay. And nobody should uh, downplay that. It's not about international law. It's, not about, it's about national security All and right. national interest. Okay. Let me also say this. Oh. The host communities, the host communities in northern Kenya, many of whose leaders are my colleagues, the Honorable Barry Shil, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, my, my uh, yeah. uh, vice chair of the, okay. of, my yes. of the committee on which I, I serve yes. as chair, That's right. uh, is on record severally as having say, said uh, that those camps must be closed. Why? The conflict with the host communities, deforestation, environmental degradation, competition oh yeah. for resources yes. with the host communities, right. yeah. even the, the Honorable uh, Adam Duale on record several, even recently, saying that those camps must be closed. Yeah. If the host communities are saying, that we do not want mm. refugees in our community. Okay, then point. who are we to sit and fair pontificate yeah. for very far point. away? We have, uh, we, have a a a we have a three year program and plan and commitment mm. that we signed as a government. The government of Kenya, the government of Somalia and the United Nations. We are halfway through it, so again, it does not make sense. That's why I say... So halfway through, how many have been... How many have been... That's why I say it's upset. Great. Yeah. Now that you mention that, yes. I, I know we have some of those facts on our super wall. If you can take a look at that so our viewers can yeah. follow yeah. that. Mm -hmm. In that time, yes. in terms of repatriation, and Moshimua makes an interesting point. It's yeah. got the numbers of the yeah. refugees. About 1,166 yes. have voluntarily, yeah. um, you know, gone there. Yeah. And Moshimua makes a fair point. There we have yeah. it on your screen. Moshimua yeah. makes a fair point that yeah. look at that and, look and at in that the same figure. period how many yeah. have maybe come? the government you know yes how many and have, we have come yes since? Yeah. yes Hopefully quite a number coming in that. um, that's your response makes a very good point yeah but again back to what we signed off on november 10th we said let's give it a three-year plan and a strategy to send them back to repatriate them voluntarily we need to then sit down together because I'm not sure that the deputy president, when he made the statement, the declaration that he made, he was somewhere in Nyeri. It, it seemed he to me like a political statement. He was very clear. I can tell you, he was very clear. So he was we. very clear, he was and very he talked clear. about if he was ordering the United Nations that yeah. if they do not repatriate them within three months, we will send lorry. Let me to fail in that respect. So, how serious are we about national security? All right, gentlemen. How serious are we about national security? We need to be taking in securing this country, including closing the camps. All right, fine. Let me be practical now. Be practical, please. We are not intellectualizing this no. debate. First of all, no, we, we, we you can intellectualize it, but let's not no. over intellectualize, <laughs> is what I said. Okay, fine. Okay. 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 I do not think we are over intellectualizing <laughs> this debate. No. No. Not at all. But even when Shimon likes me, likes me to be brutally honest now, Okay. first of all, I've said that this is scapegoating. We have not even taken our own national security seriously as a country. Mm -hmm. So to blame refugees for, Ga for Garissa and, uh, and, and um, Mandera 1, Mandera 2, Mpeketoni and the rest is actually a lie. I come from a party no, no, in this no, no, country no, no. called Capedo. I, I don't think anybody wait, is wait, doing wait, that. Wait, 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 wait. I come from Capedo. Last year in November, mm -hmm. 21 police officers plus reservists were killed mm -hmm. by a community, mm -hmm. the Pokot, members of the Pokot community, mm -hmm. bandits. Mm -hmm. They confessed in front of President Uhuru mm -hmm. Kenyatta, in front of IG Kimayo, in front of everybody that we mistakenly killed those guys thinking they were Turkanas. What did the president do? He only stood to say, return back our guns within 24 hours. Did, he not, did, he, did you hear him say, we want you, the Kamama, Lonyangapua, and that M M M M MP from that area, and that old man, bring us those guys. So for me, Moshimua, you cannot convince me that our security, uh, you are taking our security seriously. That's because seriously, no. as a Turkana, I am bitter with the Jubilee government that it's okay to kill me as a Kuru Aukot, you know, 
now we are kept getting uh, on about three uh, Doctor, no, Doctor, no, Doctor, you know, know, that's a stretch. You no, can't no, say no, no, it's no, okay to kill you because I'll, nobody I'll, has said I was going to ask if that is a stretch. That's a stretch. No, I, I don't think you should be allowed to say that. No, no, it's not a stretch. It's not a stretch. All right, let's let that Moshima respond. The context is we are taking our national security seriously. Okay? So if we are taking our national security seriously, please, let's deal with all insecurities in this country in equal measure. In okay. the same way, the right. same way we want to deal Indeed. with and the And you know, I, I want and to speak and to this point. All right, you've made your point, Dr. No, Tari. I'll explain let's, to you. Let's, let's let Moshima in fact, respond. In fact, this is very personal to I, me I now. Understand. I, I, and I, I appreciate understand. my brother. And, and <laughs> when, we, when we drafted the, the security law amendment bill, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. we spoke to all those incidences, including Capedo and including the other incident in Maragoy, Kainuk, and so on, and we spoke to all of those incidences, and we made recommendations which were, which were aimed at tightening up all the areas of, of leakage yeah. in national security. You saw what happened. Uh, we, we passed the, the laws. Some of them have been suppressed by the court. Some are in effect. So th there is an attempt by the government and, and those, those uh, responsible to ensure. And one of the steps that, that has to be taken, and we said this even in our Westgate report, we had, an, uh, I think there were 18 recommendations yeah. uh, which were uh, aimed at targeting areas of, of uh, leakage, mm -hmm. uh, areas of weakness. Uh, I think recommendation number eight uh, was, was the closure of, of Dadabe and, and even Kakuma uh, mm. to some extent okay. uh, because it was identified that Kakuma uh, was used for, for staging Westgate attack and we have a lot of intelligence that suggesting that um, Dadab uh, and, and the camps in, in Garissa are being used uh, but, but by, by but, 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 but so, so it is not yeah. it is not the solution it is not the, the silver bullet uh -huh. it is one out of it a raft yes. a quick so it's a sort of multi approach is that what you're saying and that's what people are losing okay. a quick rejoinder and then we'll a quick rejoinder before back ambassador back. comes yes. in I think my point is this and I, please I'm not over stretching this I'm not going out of the, the question I think we're discussing national security machine all I'm saying is this instead of us groping in darkness we were like now a drowning person in a pool you know groping and trying to get hold of the straw all I'm saying is, if we really want to deal with national security, there have been very obvious cases in this country that we should have yeah. dealt with so that, we, as a country, mm -hmm. I can sit here comfortably and say, my government is indeed concerned about my security, not just of Ekuru or Kot, but of everybody else. So that when I go to the Dadaab refugee camp, I can clearly say, you know what, yes, it's not every refugee that's a terrorist. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's not every Pokot who is, a, who is an enemy, it's not every Trukana, it's not every Samburu, it's not uh -huh. every all these guys. Uh -huh. So we deal with those issues decisively. Okay. I think we have not done that in terms of our, how we handle our national security. Right. We have been rather reactionary, just like this case is. Okay. And, and, and there is a, every possibility, every possibility that perhaps there are people within the, the refugee camps of the Dab. But we should also now extend this conversation yeah. to Dadaab refugee camp and other places, mm. including people, by the way, who are refugees but live in an urban area. Indeed, okay. who, who right. indeed. I support okay. that. Yeah. All right. I support that. <coughs> Ambassador? Yeah. Um, I, I, again, I think uh, really what we should do, uh, we've, we've done so well in this matter of hosting refugees. We, we are a respectable nation. One of the reasons why we are a respectable nation in the eyes of the international community is the role that we have played on behalf of the international community. Mwishimi is very right. We don't want to undo that with this uh, drastic decision that uh, has been taken. And it's still not clear to me if this is a decision that the cabinet, the government of Kenya sat down and, s and, 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 and with uh, the government of Somalia and the United Nations, whom we signed an agreement with on November 10th of 2013, if this is something that had been discussed and therefore the, dis the, the declaration, which sounded like a de declaration to me by the Deputy President, if it is in the context of a cabinet and a full government decision. It, it sounds like the government has decided, but it is not clear to me uh, that the process mm -hmm. for a major decision such as this but has actually gone through the due process. Okay. Okay. It should go the, the, the I would like to start let, let, me, let me just say. <laughs> can no, I just say? Like um, start um, yes, yeah, I just want to say, I just want to respond to that briefly because, uh, yes. you know, uh, whether or not the government has said, the cabinet, yeah. I can tell you for a fact, mm -hmm. mm. bring that motion to parliament and mm -hmm. you'll see what will happen. Resounding, mm -hmm. resounding support for the closure of the camp because the people of Kenya are tired of this situation. Yeah. The people of Kenya, and it's very interesting, mm. when um, uh, terrorist attacks happen in France, in the United States and in Australia, 
and the governments are then forced to address uh, uh, with a new thinking and new, uh, new minds, uh, new measures yeah. to deal with those, I, they, they're seen as being progressive, but we are seen as being, being reactionary. reactionary. No, no, we're uh, looking when, for those. When, when events... No, no, hang on, let me finish. When, 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 when events take place, yeah. Yeah. it makes us introspect and see what yeah. where, where is the rain beating us, and then uh -huh. we close the window or the door to stop the rain coming in. So this is one of those measures. It is just one, not the silver bullet and not the panacea. It is one of several which we are undertaking. I would like us to close, so I'll start okay. with you with final comments. I'd just like to read something, and I hope we can uh, again put it up on the wall for everybody to see. This is a quote from the UNHCR spokesperson. Her name is Karen de Grohl. She says, um, abrupt closing would have extreme humanitarian and practical consequences. She goes on to say, UNHCR would not facilitate such a move. Yeah. So uh, my That's question to you is, if this goes on and UNHCR says, we're not going to be party to this because of the 1951 convention, it's because of the non-reformer principle. Um, are we going to see what the deputy president said? Will buses and lorries be sent there and these people sent back? not also blanketly accuse everybody because I then we need to make those exceptions. Are we only dealing about Somalis only, Sudanese, Southern Sudanese? S my last point, I think it's about time really our president highballs the other presidents in the region and tell them when they are meeting in the AU or in these uh, conferences, mm -hmm. what honestly do they discuss about? You cannot tell me that President Uru should not be now looking at Salva Kiir. Mm. Yeah, and the president of you know, Rwanda and Burundi and all mm. these people, president of Somalia, and tell them, listen, you must normalize your country. Mm. Your nationals must go back to build uh, the, their country. Indeed. For me, I think for me, this is the kind of conversation politically that our own president now should be telling those other people. I mean, we cannot, Kenya cannot keep on shouldering this big burden, mm. you know, because there are many issues that come with hosting refugees. But lastly, I think Kenya needs to be on the driving seat of who is a refugee sure, in Kenya. Sure. For the longest time, and I can tell you this, I've done this from my findings and research in this area of forced migration, mm -hmm. we have always taken the easier route. So long as somebody else is determining for us who is a refugee, we sit back. Okay. And that's when we go wrong. Mm -hmm. So there is a political decision to this, mm -hmm. but there's a political solution, but there's also a legal solution to right. this. But let's not uh, ex expose Kenya uh -huh. as this country that uh, is, a, is, a, uh, is a rule of law, I mean, compliant country, but at the same time, we also wake up one morning because of, of, of our fears uh -huh. and break those laws. Okay. I mean, both approaches are very important. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, three I'm things. One, I think we're in agreement. National security is paramount. Yes. And we're not doing very well in that department. We all agree. Two, we have hosted refugees, Somali refugees particularly, for the last 24 years. We've carried the load. We've also paid the price. There's no doubt about it. And it is time to close that particular refugee camp, Dadab. It is the largest refugee camp in the world. But the way to do it mm -hmm. is not to, within the next three months, put them in lorries and buses and send them back to Somalia.
All right. That's my okay. question. Thank you very much, gentlemen, Thank you. Thank uh, you. for this discussion tonight. I believe we've tried to cover as much uh, ground as is possible within the short time we given to us. <laughs> we need about yeah, a whole day. A whole day. <laughs> a whole day. And I haven't even gotten to the feedback yet. So, Moshimi Wandungu Givenji says security of nationals is paramount and they will stop at and nothing to make sure and that Kenyans no will be kept secure. We're in agreement on that, agree on that one. We all agree. We're, agree. Agree. we're even holding hands. We're holding hands. We're, hands. we're in agreement. <laughs> paramount. No doubt. Yes. And of course, the others say, well, let the law be followed. No doubt. There is some nefarious activity that's taking place within the camps. Pinpoint them. What do you say? We'll get to your feedback in just a moment on Checkpoint. Let's take a break and wind it up at that. We'll be back right after this. Thanks.